I'm lost. Let's see some ID. Why? <laughs> There's a broken gate back there, and you're trespassing. Excuse me, sir. That gate was open, and I was under the opinion that this was a detour. Here you go, sir. I think what must have happened is I just must have gotten turned around. Or... <laughs> Nightcrawler is a strange masterpiece. The subject matter is horrific and disturbing. Almost all of its principal characters are morally bankrupt. Darkness triumphs over light in the end, but the film somehow manages to maintain an air of hope and optimism throughout. Just over halfway through Nightcrawler, Lou Bloom and his assistant Rick rush onto the scene of a car crash. But this isn't any of the countless scaremongering news stories they're trying to push. Within the crash car lies Lou's greatest opposition, Joe Loder, a veteran Nightcrawler. Furthermore, Lou was actually responsible for the crash, having messed with the vehicle of his competitor earlier that day. As Lou whips out his camera, Rick begs him. Hey, hey don't film that man, he's one of us. But Lou's cold response is. Not anymore, Rick. We're professionals. He's a sale. This interaction cuts to the heart of Nightcrawler and what makes it wholly unique. It's a film centered around an unwavering sociopath who commits himself to a parasitic form of media, which literally relies on the misfortunes of others. It's a film that lays bare the xenophobic and sensationalist undertones media networks rely on to garner fears and bolster views. It's a film about how this is a perfectly financially sustainable prospect when people tune in for it. At the same time, it's a captivating success story that has you rooting for a morally deplorable anti-hero. The best and clearest way that I can phrase it to you, Lou, to capture the spirit of what we air, is think of our newscast as a screaming woman running down the street with her throat cut. But in a film as cold, bleak and cynical as this one, you have to wonder, what keeps us watching? And, more potently, what keeps us engaged with watching our abhorrent protagonist? Let's explore the narrative and its characters to try and piece together how director Dan Gilroy and his incredible cast and production team keep our eyes glued to the screen. I'm focusing on framing. A proper frame not only draws the eye into a picture, but keeps it there longer, dissolving the barrier between the subject and the outside of the frame. Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and is voted for by you guys in last week's poll. Today, we're going to be exploring Nightcrawler. Who am I? I'm a hard worker. I set high goals, and I've been told that I'm persistent. In yet another standout performance from Jake Gyllenhaal, we meet his character Lou at a low point. No career, no prospects, and no respect from anyone. Spending every night out stealing materials to sell for a couple of dollars. But by chance, he comes across a car crash on the freeway and witnesses a pair with video cameras snapping up the footage for the morning news. And with that, he's found his calling. Snapping up a video camera in a police scanner, he begins working as a nightcrawler, a photojournalist that cruises the city after dark, listening to radio chatter for the chance to record footage of crimes that can be sold to news outlets. Sure, the first few attempts are failures, but as he testifies throughout the film, he's a very quick learner. And before long, he secures his position as an exclusive stringer for the lowest rated news channel in Los Angeles. Being rated so low, and with the prospect of being fired at any moment dangling over their heads, the workers prey on the fears of Americans by cultivating stories that Rene Rosso's Nina, lose key contact in the station, describes as showing crimes against people preferably well-off or white, injured at the hands of the poor, preferably a minority. Later on, these off-kilter true colors show once more, when Nina questions how much of a particular abhorrent tape they can show. How much of this can we show? You mean legally? No, morally, of course legally. And of course, in her final act of willfully modifying a news story to continue with a singular narrative that promotes fear, even if the evidence proves otherwise. This is news. It detracts from the story. It is the story. The story is urban crime creeping into the suburbs. That's the story. After picking up the ropes and doing a few rounds, Lou eventually hires Riz Ahmed's Rick, a similar down and out but with a much more personable demeanor, to help him get to locations and later film alongside him. The two then quickly rise up the ranks, with Lou's sociopathic tendencies flaring in all of his human interactions, culminating in him manipulating Nina into a date, where he blackmails her into an off-screen sexual relationship. Friends don't pressure friends to fucking sleep with them. Actually, that's not true, Nina. Because as I'm sure you know, a friend is a gift you give yourself. Around this time, Lou also ups the ante by meddling in the scenes he shoots, from moving injured bodies into a more favorable position for the shot, to eventually arriving on the crime scene of a brutal home invasion and triple homicide. 
One key moment to highlight here is that after Lou walks into the active crime scene and records footage of people that had just died instead of trying to help them, returning to a stressed out Rick, Lou points to all the potential business and job prospects which may have flown Rick's way if only he'd gotten involved. Again, completely disregarding human life and prioritizing business growth above all. When aired, this gruesome footage pulls the station into the eyes of the police who track down Lou and demand the footage. You filmed him dying. Hey, that's what I do, it's my job. I like to say that if you're seeing me, you're having the worst day of your life. While he gives up a version of the footage, it's a doctored cut with shots of the assailants themselves removed, setting up Lou for his final flourish, which in his eyes is a triumphant victory, but for us is a moral low. You gotta call the cops. And we will, at the right time. Here Lou masterminds a setup by calling police to catch the criminals in a restaurant, filming the whole interaction as it pans out. Rick rightfully panics, blackmails Lou and demands more pay, exclaiming that he won't do what he's being told because it's wrong. But inevitably, he ends up with the camera in his hand. Soon the plan takes shape, with a showdown leading to the deaths and injuries of police officers and bystanders. Two smashed police cruisers and a massive car crash later, Lou pulls Rick in to get the final shot, and ironically, Rick is the one to be shot. First by a gun from one of the assailants, and second by Lou's camera. You saw it. You saw it. I can't jeopardize my company's success to retain an untrustworthy employee. Lou then delivers the footage to Nina in an extremely bizarre, almost sexual scene where they whisper in each other's faces, lording over the career-affirming value of this footage, regardless of it being absolutely soaked in moral wrongdoing, having caused multiple deaths. Despite this footage causing Lou's arrest and interrogation, the film ends with him giving a motivational speech to his new interns. I will never ask you to do anything that I wouldn't do myself. But as the van disappears into the night, we know for Lou that anything doesn't account for any of the things moral obligation would stop the majority of us from doing. Thus, we're left with something bleak. Scaremongering media has prevailed, and a sociopath who has repeatedly shown a complete devaluation of human life is now the owner of a thriving business. Why then does it feel kind of triumphant? I feel like grabbing you by your ears right now and screaming in your face, I'm not fucking interested. Instead, I'm gonna drive home and do some accounting. A relatively recent paper by Professor Arthur A. Rain and his colleagues suggests that instead of moral judgments, which make us admire heroes, the enjoyment of anti-hero narratives is tied to identifying with said anti-hero. While we would be hard-pressed to say that we fully identify with Lou, the magnetism of his character is through identifying with the situation. My motto is, if you want to win the lottery, you have to make the money to buy a ticket. When we first meet Lou, he's doing everything and anything to try and make ends meet, but by the end of the narrative, he's a thriving business owner. And through this gradual rise, we experience the entire hierarchy of the Enterprise. Of course, for us all, or at least most of us, this system makes up a large portion of our lives. Finding our niche where we can earn a living and working our way up to be recognized in our field. What's more, as an incredibly hard worker, a character trait free of morality, Lou shows us the possibility of forcing your way to the top of the food chain, in some ways giving us a career plan to be envious of. That why you pursue something is equally as important as what you pursue. Either way, through our identification with Lou's path to success, we identify with Lou, regardless of him taking each stage beyond the boundary of general morals. You know what fear stands for? What? False evidence appearing real. The soundtrack also plays a huge role in Nightcrawler. If you take a moment to close your eyes during the screening and just listen to the music, you're greeted with something quite astonishing, thanks to musical legend James Newton Howard. The music is warm, light, uplifting, and hopeful. It doesn't reflect the sociopathy of Lou's character, the grim images he captures, or the exploitation of suffering that he and the news stations are literally selling for cash. Instead, it hones in on the hope of success ascending through capitalism, even climaxing at the very end with a light, playful variant on the theme. In an interview with Consequence of Sound, director Dan Gilroy said, It's the music in his head. It's awakening all the same things that you might feel when any of us are pursuing a goal. Through this, we're actually provided with a strong, conditioned response of positive anticipation, which we've learnt from similar scores throughout history. In other words, Lou's presentation is so compelling because we both somewhat identify with his struggle and root for his triumph due to the score, all while knowing full well how socially deplorable he really is. <laughs> you know what your trouble is, man? You don't fucking understand people. What if my problem wasn't that I don't understand people, but that I don't like them? There's also one more key consideration for our engagement with it specifically, except this time it has nothing to do with Lou. 
Throughout many of Lou's lowest moments, Rick is there to try and ground him, despite being shocked, appalled, and most often completely speechless at his sociopathic actions. Rick is, more or less, analogous to the eyes of the audience, acting as our real point of empathy within the film. He reflects those of us who are shaken up by reckless driving, terrified by the idea of criminals, and we, who are just trying to make ends meet however we can. For each moment he witnesses, he instinctively vocalizes his discomfort and dislike for Lou and his actions, just like we do as we watch them unfolding on screen. But of course, being less career-minded, more moralistic, and ultimately less sociopathic, Rick is left to die, sacrificed by his boss in a move that nets him an additional 25,000. Morality ultimately fails in Nightcrawler's dog-eat-dog -dog world. At the same time, we're faced with the fact that despite Rick's inclination to cry out that what they were doing was morally wrong, he continued to work with Lou. Much like Nina, her colleagues, and especially Lou, Rick prioritizes financial security and success over what was right. Thus, while Nightcrawler functions as an overtly scathing critique of parasitic media, it also serves to remind us that like Rick, when we choose to participate in the creation of this kind of media, even at the spectator level, we are all just as complicit in its success.